Sixth grade, happy Tuesday. We're ready to get started on our lesson in science class as we start to talk about different adaptations today that animals have that help them uh, survive. So lesson one, the question is, why do adaptations vary among animals? And we're going to talk about three different foxes to get us started out. The summary statement says, organisms are adapted to the environment in which they live. Each species has its own unique set of adaptations. And we're over here. You got your notes ready to go. Let's roll. Staying cool in a hot desert is not easy. The ears on a fennec fox may look too large for its head. So this is your fennec fox down here with these huge ears. But these ears are useful adaptation. When the fennec fox becomes too hot, blood rushes to its ears. Their body heat moves from the fox's blood into the air. Large ears help keep the fennec fox cool. Can you guess why... Small ears are an important adaptation for the arctic fox. The arctic fox must have adaptations to help keep it warm in the extreme cold of its environment. Small ears help an arctic fox by reducing heat loss. So fennec fox guys help keep it cool in the desert and the arctic fox helps keep it uh, warm in the arctic. You think about us as human beings even guys. When we go outside in the winter we put a hat on our head or earmuffs or a headband, right? We normally feel it in our ears first, guys. And so that is an adaptation God has made in living things to help regulate heat is by pumping a lot of blood through there. And the more blood, the more that will be lost. So in the desert, we want to lose it. Big ears. In the Arctic, we don't small ears. Now that doesn't mean this guy struggles hearing and this guy's really good at hearing guys. And if you look at human beings, it's a very small, you know, tube that goes into there to actually do the sound of it. Okay, because Earth's many species live in different environments, number three in your notes, each has a unique set of adaptations that helps it to meet the needs in different ways. The table shows some other adaptations of the fennec fox and the arctic fox. Compare those with the gray fox, which lives in the deciduous forest. So then they took that and compared it with a fox that we might actually have seen or heard of in our lifetime. Um, because there are gray foxes in Wisconsin. So guys, what they did is they talked about the ears, probably something you and I don't think of. Like when I think of adaptations of an animal, um, we will think about things uh, like a giraffe's long neck that helps it eat the leaves off of a tree kind of thing. I usually don't think of an animal's ears. Um, they went back to the different color of their fur to help them with that, what they have on their feet, to help them move. So they just give you some adaptations and then the differences between those adaptations based on the environment that they have. All right, turn in the page. Let's talk about these different adaptations and break it down into categories. The species shown on these pages have different living conditions and their adaptations make them able to live successfully in their environment. Those adaptations develop over many generations, guys, not during a lifetime of a single individual. So generations for number four, but after you write that in, understand the questions that we can ask you. True or false? An animal will develop structural adaptations during its lifetime. No, it takes generation after generation after generation. This happens over a long period of time, especially according to your science book, guys. Remember, your science book obviously believes in evolution, that the world is millions of years old. So they're going to definitely push time with you to do that. But it's also true, guys, that it just takes generations to get there, okay? A species changes over long periods as individuals are born with new characteristics that make them better suited to survive. These individuals survive and pass their new characteristics on to their offspring. Adaptations, adaptations enable organisms to get energy and get a mate and reproduce. Or if you want to add a different one, protect the organism in their environment. So one, you have to be able to get food and all animals are adapted and even plants are adapted to get food. Animals are adapted to get mate. That's what's going on right here. This peacock displays the shimmering colors of his feathers to attract a female. So male peacocks, guys, are beautiful. Females, not so much. So the males plume out like this during mating season to attract a female peacock. Okay, they need the generation to carry on. Why do they have to do that? God told them to, didn't he? God, when he made the fish and the birds in day five and the land creatures day six, said, be fruitful and multiply. Take care and produce your own kind. And animals do that.
to make sure they have those things. Adaptations include three types of adaptations. One, behavior. Two, structure. And three, body process. We're going to talk right here about the structural adaptations, and then we'll talk number two and three, behaviors and body processes. Okay? They're going to start describing this beautiful mandrel right here. You get a little glimpse of him. It says structural adaptations. You got that one right there, guys. Behavioral, structural, going on. The mandrel shown on the next page has several important structural adaptations. His long jaw gives his mouth plenty of room for large teeth. What do we use those huge teeth for? To grind the seeds and grasses that he eats, letter A. His powerful hands dig up other food, letter B, like roots and bulbs. Large pouches open in the cheeks beside the lower teeth to extend down the side of his neck. Uh... These pouches can hold as much food as a stomach, letter C. So he can put all these things he's eaten in his, just like you and I put food and we puff out our cheeks when we got too much food in our mouth. This guy has so much that he can literally have as much food in his mouth as he does in his stomach. This storage frees the mandrel's hands and feet for running and climbing. So all those things, guys, is just how that animal, based on what he eats, where he lives, and how he moves, are adaptations for him. Okay, those are all structural. When you think structural, guys, think your body structure, what the outside of your body looks like, or, and I don't want to say maybe the inside also, obviously, if I think about teeth inside my mouth, but it's the physical of it. The mandrel's teeth have a function other than just eating. When the male mandrel shows his large front teeth, the behavior serves as a warning to other males. Letter A. Animal behaviors are adaptations that are just as important as structural adaptations. Many animal behaviors are inherited traits. That's key to the worksheet that you're working on, guys. These are inherited. You probably are familiar with many behavioral adaptations. A spider's web, a bird's nest, these structures are a result of inherited behavior. So over here, guys, I have a spider spinning a web, a bird building a nest, and migrating to a warmer climate in the winter. In other words, what they're getting at that, guys, is spiders spin webs. We know that. But it's not like when a baby spider is born, mama and dad spider pull my aside and says, all right, child of mine, let me teach you how to spin a web. That is a behavior they have for catching food that is inherited for them. They know that from the start. The processes that go on in an, in an organism's body also are adaptations that aid survival. When animals hibernate, their body processes slow down, their temperature can become lower, and their heartbeat and breathing slow down. Hibernation protects animals from cold months in their environment. So I wrote down hibernation, what they talked about, photosynthesis is mentioned, and so is digestion. Um, and these are adaptations that develop with time, guys. So you think about, uh, depending on what an animal eats, its digestion tract will be different. If it has to digest meat or if it has to digest food, um, that stuff is adapted to the environment that they live in. You think about some of the things that you and I eat that other cultures around the world may or may not eat and we might find certain foods not good or have a hard time digesting it and other people can because of the adaptations they've gone through so we talk about other things with behaviors you see this a lot with animals doing different behaviors to try to get food or warn people or like we talked about up here with the peacock pushing them off okay beautiful little chart guys we'll use this one on the test it also answers a few questions on our worksheet Okay, last but not least is over here, this extinct one. Species that cannot adapt to changing conditions in their environment will become extinct. Number 10, when a species becomes extinct, all the individuals have died. Some people think that species became extinct, extinct only in the past, but species continue to become extinct every day. Some scientists estimate that one plant or animal species becomes extinct every 20 minutes. They point out that about 40 species of fishes out of 950 species have become extinct in the past century. Okay, guys, that, that does not, this math doesn't come anywhere close to this math. But what they're saying is, hey, we studied this and we've noticed that in the past 100 years, we've lost 40 species of fish. Well, okay, what about all the mammals? What about all the reptiles? What about all the plants? What about all the bugs? What about all the, and so they'd go back and they say, my goodness, we could be losing them all the time. Guys, there's no way to prove that, obviously. That's just what some believe and estimate. Uh, do I think it's that bad? Not for a second. Do, should we be scared? Yes. What they're getting at is think about how you're impacting the environment. 
Some causes of extinction are natural, such as a climate change. Other species become extinct because of human causes. So I wrote this can happen naturally or because of humans. We got to be careful. We've caused a lot of the problems. Overhunting, destroying habitat, and like this one, such as habitat destruction and pollution. The American bald eagle, shown above, almost became extinct in part because of the use of a DDT. DDT is a chemical used to kill insects. So farmers were putting DDT on their fields, guys, to kill the bugs so the bugs wouldn't eat their crops. That insecticide eventually got in the water. The water then uh, affected the fish. The eagles ate the fish, and it had a huge impact on the eagles. We'll talk about this uh, in a couple lessons, guys, on how this killed the eagles off. But today we've now learned that, and we've banned DDT so that the eagles are doing better and thriving. But we need to be careful with those things. Okay, we got the notes filled in. Blessings on the back side, guys. Uh, we answered almost all of them in that video. They're almost word for word in your book to stress those things out. Best of luck to you.